How's it going guys and welcome back to Drop Clutch Garage. Today we have something a little bit different here. We have a brand new project we're going to work on on this 2013 Ford Raptor. I'm actually back home in my hometown of Chicago to work on this Raptor here. We're going to do a real simple upgrade that's going to really increase the drivability of this vehicle, uh, make it a much more pleasant driving experience. We're going to upgrade to CarPlay. Those of you who have used CarPlay before know how amazing it is and how intuitive it is and how much better it's going to be than this sync system. So we're going to bring it back up to 2021 and we're going to run you through that process and show you exactly how to do it. Alright guys, first thing we're going to get started with is we're going to go ahead and disconnect the battery because we are going to be messing with the passenger side airbag just a little bit. Uh, it does have to be moved out of the way to be able to remove uh, the factory radio. So we're just going to need an 8 millimeter socket. Disconnect the negative terminal. Just like that, and that's really all we need to do in the engine bay. We're gonna move inside and finish up in there. All right guys, first thing, we're gonna go ahead and remove, just lower the glove box, so we need two tabs on either side. We're gonna push in, just gonna lower right down. We have three bolts up in here that we're gonna have to remove that'll allow us to move this airbag out of the way and get to a bolt that's securing this piece, so we could then move the console out. We'll go ahead and get you in there so you can see those three bolts I'm talking about. Alrighty guys, those are our three bolts right there. They are eight millimeters, so we'll go ahead and zip those off real quick. All right, next guys, we're just gonna pop off this airbag real quick uh, using one of your trim tools, plastic trim tools, so you don't scratch anything. Kind of work its way under here. Pop it on out. There we are. And guys, we don't need to disconnect the wiring going to the airbag. All we needed to do is get it out of the way so we can gain access to these two bolts right here. Uh, these are gonna be two seven millimeters, I believe. Uh, this will allow us to remove this trim panel right here. All right guys, just like with the airbag, we're gonna use our trim tool now to go ahead and pry up this piece of the console now that we have those two bolts removed. Of course, you just wanna take your time with it so you don't break any of the clips. Right, guys we did remove this side panel which comes right here it just pops out this way and then pulls towards the back of the vehicle and then to get the bottom portion of this out because it's all free up here it's just a clip holding it down here we're gonna have to remove this piece of the center console we'll go ahead and pop off our center console uh, we'll go ahead and have to as you can see guys we're gonna have to go ahead and shift the transmission back to say drive or one or two just to get enough clearance to pull the rest of this center piece out. So I'm gonna hop over to the passenger driver. I'm gonna hop over to the driver's side and go ahead and take care of that. So actually before you wanna disconnect the battery, it will help out if you go ahead and shift it down into one. That'll allow you enough space to get out this center console or you can pop this off and push down to shift it manually like you would if your battery died and you needed to push the vehicle. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bezel around our instrument panel. Uh, that way we can get this fully out and uh, move on to removing the rest of the center console. Let's have these two seven mils at the top and then clips around the edges. Guys, now to finally get out our center console, we're gonna go ahead and pop off our auxiliary switches here. That should give us enough clearance to pop this guy right out. 
go ahead and disconnect the two harnesses. I'm sorry, three harnesses. And out it comes. We'll go ahead and pop off this bottom trim panel here. And then down below we have two seven millimeters. We'll go ahead and zip off. out, kind of wiggle it around these two side pieces here, and then we'll have to disconnect our HVAC controls at the bottom. Looks like we just have one harness connecting that to the back. And we got one up top for the traction control. Actually, we can just pop this up top here. All right guys, we have four seven millimeters attaching uh, the rest of the stereo, so go ahead and zip those off and move this, and we'll get ready to install our new one. Now with the four screws removed, we'll go ahead and pull it out and disconnect our wiring. That's it. All right guys, we went ahead and got this from a company that actually pre-coded it to the VIN number of this vehicle, so when you order it, uh, it asks for your VIN number. Um, if you didn't do that, say if you got it out of a, a newer wrecked Raptor or something like that, you would have to take the vehicle to Ford to have it coded to your vehicle for it to work properly. All right, we got our new head unit here. We also have all of our adapter wiring. And I believe a new GPS antenna as well. Go ahead and get these things unbox and get them ready for installation. Okay, so it went ahead and came with this adapter harness for our antenna. It also came with these four factory pieces here for our USBs, uh, which will replace our current setup in the center console. It comes with both pieces. All right guys, so the only wire we really have to run that's not a part of the factory setup is the antenna for the GPS. Uh, it is a separate one than the factory one. Uh, so it does say in the instructions that we can mount it uh, on the dashboard passenger side as long as it isn't on top of any type of metal or anything like that. And it comes with a nice alcohol wipe to clean the surface before we stick it. We'll go ahead and take care of routing this wire first. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad now that we already have the airbag removed. We should be able to find a nice pathway to drop the wire down and bring it up through uh, to where the radio is. So we'll go ahead and knock this out first and then we'll get to installing the radio. All right guys, I went ahead and popped off this side panel here on the passenger side. I went ahead and dropped the GPS wire down right through here and was able to grab it through that hole and then run it on the inside of the glove box out to here. So we'll go ahead and wipe this down with an alcohol wipe and stick that antenna right there and then we'll get to installing the rest of the radio. All right guys, now that we have that antenna wire ran through here, uh, we're gonna just basically plug everything in here, guys. We got our main harness, clips into place like that. We have our new antenna, which comes up here, like that. And then we have our other antenna, like that. Go ahead and funnel your wires or organize your wires and make sure you don't pinch anything while you're sliding it back into place. But before you do that, guys, we have to remove the brackets from the old radio, place them on here, so that way we can go ahead and screw it on. All right, guys, these are the brackets you're gonna remove off of your old radio. You're gonna need a T20 Torx, uh, two bolts on each side bracket, and those just bolt right up to the new one. Just like that. We're gonna use those same seven millimeter uh, screws that attach the old one to attach the new one. If you're losing a power tool like this, you kind of want to get it started by hand or very, very slow. You don't want to get these in cross-threaded. Very easy to do on just those, because uh, it's just going into those speed clips. You don't want to have to cut new threads through there and it'll be real hard to get it off or get it right back on. So if you got a good feel for your impact driver, Go ahead and use that. Just start real slow. 
Once you know you gotta thread it good. That's it. Cut it. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and replace our sync systems um, USB inputs with the ones included with the kit. Uh, Cause we no longer need the SD card for the sync anymore. As you can see, this is the new bezel it came with and we have two tabs on both sides of it that we just need to squeeze in on the old one to be able to remove the faceplate. And then we'll go ahead and pop in the new one. Uh, and the kit did come with this adapter harness to use to adapt our new USBs to the original factory wiring. So we'll go ahead and take care of that. We'll reassemble everything and we'll see you again when we turn it back on. All right guys, so we have it installed and we're gonna fire it up for the first time. New Raptor logo with the Ford Performance. And again, guys, what's awesome about this system here is it retains all your factory controls, um, all your uh, climate control still remains into the factory unit here, uh, along with the heated seats and everything else. Okay, agree to the terms, skip that step. There we are. We got our Apple Car Play now in our 2013 Ford Raptor. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing the video. If you want to see any other upgrades similar to this, please drop a comment. Let me know what you like.